In today's episode, we'll talk about the greatest tool in candle making and why you shouldn't wait another day before picking one up. Hello, my name is Kevin. Welcome back to Armitage Candle Company, the premier resource for accelerating your candle making skills and business on the internet. Today's episode is all about an investment that a lot of you maybe have already made, but if you're like me when I first started out, it took me a long time before I finally tried it out. And when I did, boom, my candle making came out so much better. For those of you that don't know, a heat gun is like a super powered hairdryer and it does exactly what it sounds like. It fires heat and it's capable of generating heat over 500 degrees up to a thousand in some cases. They're used a lot in commercial applications for drying wood or stripping paint or thawing pipes or deactivating glue. Like the ideas are endless. You'll also find heat guns that are made for more crafty applications like embossing, but they all function the same way. And the truth is they all blow. Bad joke aside, today I'm gonna to give you three uses for heat guns and candle making to demonstrate how versatile this tool really is. But no doubt there are many, many more. Becoming a master candle maker means you're able to control the temperatures throughout the entire life of the candle making operation, including the cure time. You have to become very aware of how the environment affects your product and your process. And a heat gun only gives you more control over this element. So the first tip today is heat guns allow you to preheat your jars. Now, not everyone's making container candles, but if you are, this is a very useful application. Remember that wax, when it melts, it actually expands in size, and when it cools, it contracts. If the container you're pouring into is drastically cooler than the wax, the sides will actually cool so much faster than the middle, the core of the wax, that when the core finally does cool, it'll pull those sides in. And this is commonly called a wet spot in a candle, and it is cosmetic unless it's really serious. I've made some paraffin candles before with such severe wet spots that you could actually rattle the candle around in the container. And that's obviously not what you want. So where does a heat gun come into play? Well, imagine if the sides weren't as cool when you pour the wax. Now there's a few ways to do this. Some candle makers use this strategy and pour their wax blend actually at a much cooler temperature. So they reduce the amount of difference between the walls and the wax. And that helps, but using a heat gun, another way you can kind of hack the system is to just run it over those containers a little bit before you pour to heat the entire container up. You don't have to make them scorching hot, really just 10, 15 seconds from a distance will do. Surprisingly, this helps a lot with reducing adhesion issues. The second way heat guns are really good is for cleaning supplies. Now, candle making is messy, right? There's a wax everywhere and you're pouring it in from one container into another. Not only that, you're dealing with fragrance oil and you've got maybe some colored dye, which for me usually ends up on my hands. But a heat gun helps make quick work of some of that extra wax that ends up on other surfaces. For example, I use this spatula to stir some of my wax blends. And at the end, there can be a really thick layer of wax on the top, depending on how good of a candle maker I was that day. A heat gun lets me from a distance kind of melt that wax right into a garbage can or onto a paper towel, which I can wipe away much easier than trying to struggle to scrape that hardened wax off of the tool. And it doesn't stop with spatulas, and maybe this isn't a great example given that it's not hard and metal, you can use a heat gun to blast a presto pot or a pouring pot or a measuring glass. Even going so far as to say you can use a heat gun to melt old candles. You don't have to melt all the wax, just enough to move the mass off of the surface that you're cleaning. Wax is so much easier to clean in its liquid form than its solid form sometimes. So being able to transfer that from a solid to a liquid makes it a lot easier to sop up with paper towels and rubbing alcohol, whatever you have on hand. So the third way today, and possibly the most important application, at least for me, is heat guns let you fix imperfections. Candle makers often judge the quality of their final product completely based on what the top of the candle looks like. Ignoring everything else, if you're a soy wax candle maker, getting that top to be perfectly smooth 
can be really hard to do. We've talked about that before, but soy wax, especially soy wax, is polymorphic. It forms crystals and soy wax naturally wants to have a bumpy top because it's forming crystals in response to temperature changes and time. And some paraffins will concave down when they need a second pour. And sometimes you just don't have enough wax or patience to do that. Where a heat gun comes into play is you can just melt the top layer of that and it will reset the candle top by melting and rehardening, hopefully staying smooth. With soy, you always risk a little bit of crystallization. Here's a few final thoughts. If you don't have a heat gun and you're considering buying one, what should you look for? Well, heat guns on the market operate at a temperature range far beyond what we need for candle making. This heat gun was less than $30 and I made many, many candles with it. So you don't need anything too heavy duty. The manufacturers aren't thinking of candle makers when they create these, so we're actually on the good side of the market. So when you're strolling down the aisle at Home Depot or you're scrolling down the page on Amazon looking at heat guns, what should you look for? Well, you don't need anything too expensive. Like we don't have commercial level needs in a heat gun. Now, now if a certain product does have really bad product reviews, it's worth checking into that. But in general, almost any heat gun is gonna work for you. A caution you against spending too much money on it, $50 or less is about where I would plan your budget at first. The other caution is that when you finally have it and you're starting to use it, just make sure that you don't concentrate too much heat too fast on your candles. You can scorch or damage or even melt the wax coating off of the wick, so be very careful when you use it. It is hot. The other feature I would look for in a heat gun is to make sure it has some method of being able to stand on its own. You're gonna be turning it on and off a lot. Hopefully you're not turning it on and off too much. Like I hope your candles turn out really good, but if you are, you're gonna to need to be able to set it down. And because of the heat, just for safety's sake, it's better to be able to set it down in a safe standing position than trying to balance it or keep it away from other objects. I would just look for a built-in stand. That's all I have today. If you're using heat guns for interesting ways that I didn't mention, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you're doing with them. Otherwise, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you later.